Do you find that when you cut stuff on your laser, it's a little too loose, you have a little too much play between the parts? In this video, I'm going to show you how to fix this problem. This is Lightburn Curve Test Generator, and I will leave a link to this website in the description. You can see they have several different tests over here that you can run. Today, we're focused on the Curve Test. So this test will produce either interlocking tabs or circles and holes, and you'll use that to figure out what the curve of your laser is. All we need to do is come down here and we're going to set our curve range. This is the default. I'm going to leave this as is for this first run. Then you're going to set your cut settings. So whatever power and speed that you want for your material you're using. So you need to know, first of all, what power and speed will cut through the material you're going to use for this test. In my case, I'm going to do 80% at 800 millimeters per minute, not per second. Let me fix that. So 800 millimeters per minute. And then for your label is important because it's going to label each of these tabs and you need to have these labeled so that you match them up properly. Otherwise the test isn't going to work for you. Oh, and then the last thing you want to do is select either tabs or circle into hole. So we're going to do, I've already done interlocking tabs. I'm going to do circle into hole for this one. You're going to click generate light burn file. It's going to download to your computer and then you can click on it in your downloads and it will open up and light burn. Let me bring up Lightburn. It's going to give you the little, this is the website that I got it from. And then it's going to pop this down here into Lightburn. I typically just get rid of the label because I don't need that. And I'm just going to run this pattern here. I'm not going to change any settings. It automatically, if you look over here, you can see all the settings have been set for you automatically. You don't need to change anything. All you need to do, set your laser up, frame it up and cut it out. I've got my interlocking tabs cut out and I've got my circles and holes cut out. And the astute of you may notice that I am missing 40 and 50 from the circles. And there are two reasons for that. The first reason is I didn't measure and the 50 went off the edge of my material. So I don't have the 50. The 40 fit, except I pressed stop on late burn instead of stop on my recording software. So I didn't get 40 and 50, but that's fine. I'm pretty sure I don't have a 0.4 or 0.5 millimeter curve. Anyway, you take the circle or the tab and you drop it into the corresponding part, and you want to find the one that has no play. So for me, 0.1, nice and snug. And you'll know that it's it's right because if we go up to 0 0.2, it does not fit. And then 0.3 definitely won't either. If we come in here, we link them all up, you will see there are giant gaps till we get to about 0 0.0. And there's a little bit of a gap. And then 0.1 is a nice snug fit. And 0.2 will not fit at all. So for my laser, my kerf is 0.1 millimeters. I could go back and dial this in and go from like 0 to 0.2 and doing increments of like 0.01. Kind of overkill in my opinion. For me, this is good enough. It is a snug enough fit and I'm happy with that for my kerf. But what do you do with this? Future Curtis here. I realized while editing my footage that in the test, I had the tabs wrong. I had 0.1 and negative 0.1 linked together. And there was a little bit of play in them. And I wasn't paying attention to that while I was doing it because I already knew point 0.1 was my kerf because I'd done the test prior. I just want to point that out in case some of you noticed that I had the wrong tabs interlinked. Now, we have our kerf for mine. For example, it is 0.1 millimeters. All you need to do in Lightburn for your layer, double click to open it. And in kerf offset, you're going to come in here and you're just going to drop in your kerf offset. Now this is outward, meaning it is going to move the laser outside of the line when it cuts to account for the kerf. If I wanted to do an inward kerf, I could do a negative here and that would make it inward, meaning it moves the laser inside the line when it cuts by 0.1. For me, I want it to do on the outside. And that's it. Now on the fly, light burn will automatically take your kerf into account. If you're unfamiliar with the term kerf, it's very simple. If I cut something on a table saw, using a blade like this. This blade has a thickness of three millimeters. And when it cuts to the material, it is going to remove three millimeters of material. And that is my kerf. The amount of material that is removed by the tool is the kerf. Now for lasers, it's a lot smaller, but it's still there. And that's what we're doing this test for to figure out how much material we're losing when we're cutting. The next step, we are going to cut out a simple square. I'm going to set this to... Yeah, 100 by 100 is good. Make sure we get an even number. 
because this will make the next steps much easier. So I'm going to set this to 100 by 100. And then I am going to cut this out. Go in here. Remember, make sure your kerf offset from the first part of the video is entered here. You obviously will need to fill in your values for your cut, your speed and power for the material and the laser you're using. And then we're just going to cut this out. Before you take it out of the laser, what you want to do is you want to denote which direction was which axis. So left and right is X. So in my case, I'm just going to put X like this. And I'm going to put a Y here like so. It's just going to let me know which direction was which, because once you take this out, it's a square. You're going to have no idea. The other thing I'd recommend is just writing down on here how big it was supposed to be, just in case you get distracted in the middle of this and walk away and forget, or for future reference. So I've got my 100 millimeter square here, and I've got X and I've got Y. The next thing you're going to need is you're going to need a good pair of calipers, and we're just going to take the calipers, and we're going to measure. I'm gonna just going to take two measurements on each direction. 100.14, I'm just going to jot that down, and then I'm going to flip it and do the same thing on the bottom. And you can see at the bottom here, it is 100.11. And then I'm going to take two measurements on the y-axis. So this is my y-axis. We're going to flip it this way. So y-axis, 100.16. And then we're going to flip it again, 100.18. So we're done measuring this part. Now we go back to the computer. We've got our measurements here. The next thing you need to do is make an average of the two numbers for your x and your y calibration. My case was 100.125. For X and 100.17 for Y, we're going to take these numbers now. In Lightburn, we are going to go Edit, Machine Settings. Quick note, you have to have your laser turned on for this next step. So make sure your laser is turned on, connected to the computer. Go to Machine Settings, click Calibrate Axis. And then you're going to come in here. So first thing, we're going to calibrate X. Requested distance was 100. Actual distance was 100.125. So you're going to drop in 100.125, or while you're going to put in your number, in my case it was 100.125, and it's going to change this number here for you automatically. Hit right, and then you're going to hit calibrate again. Hit Y, and request it was 100, and my actual distance for Y was 100.17. All right, now we cut the same square again. Just like last time, remember to label your axes. So 100 millimeters, and this is calibrated. Now we take our calibrated piece, and we're going to measure it out. 100.09, and 100.08, 100.06, and 100.06. I'm going to call the fact that I've, I'm like within 0 0.08 and 0 0.06 millimeters a win. And also, you may have noticed this says calibration 4. That's because it did take me a few tries. Sometimes you need to go back and forth a little bit to get it dialed in, and that's what I did. I've done four of these. Now, most lasers claim an accuracy of 0 0.01 millimeters in terms of movement. So if you want to continue to dial in your laser as close as possible, feel free to do so. You now know the steps on how to calibrate the X and Y axis in light burn. For me personally, I'm happy with where I ended up. 0 0.08 millimeters on both axes are fine for me, and that's where I'm going to stick. So, thanks for watching the video. I hope you find this helpful. If you have, please remember to leave a like, and I'll see you in the next video.